Hello again, everybody. I'm Matt Wrigley. I'm the tech integrator here at Star Point Central School District, and we're ready for another uh, edition, weekly edition of Tips of the Week. And on this week's edition, school issued Chromebooks, what exactly are these things? So when we ask that question, what is a school issued Chromebook? It's a device that connects to the internet, and obviously it's designed to be used with your uh, child's Google for Education account that they've been given access to and that a user can access all of these Google apps, uh, Docs, Sheets, you might see your children doing slide presentations that are made available by our IT department at starpointcsd.org. Why is this device different than, let's say, a laptop or a computer? Um, even though they're growing, it really doesn't have a large hard drive. In other words, a large, uh, a lot, large space on its device for a lot of memory. Whereas if you were to buy a Mac or an HP laptop or a, a personal computer that runs Windows, there would be quite a bit of space to save pictures and files and all kinds of things. Um, it doesn't have a CD-ROM drive. You probably noticed that already. It's supposedly supposed to be lightweight, although the newer ones are starting to get a little heavy. Um, and it's supposed to process and access information quickly. The design of a Chromebook is for speed. Um, not the spinning windows that you normally would have on a PC. And a little note here about this hard drive. Um, I tell students and teachers this, um, you want to keep this thing called your downloads folder clean because it can take up space quickly. Now this downloads folder looks like this on a um, Chromebook. Uh, when you go into the files app, you can see up here how much space you have left. And then this downloads folder contains anything that you were to download, a picture, maybe for a project, uh, a file your teacher sent you. All of these things take up space, and you can see the size of these things and when they were downloaded. Clearing this out on a regular basis can really help the performance of your Chromebook and get it running a little quicker. On the other big thing about a Chromebook is the keyboard. The keyboard does look a lot different, namely where the caps lock is normally would be located and these, these buttons up here. I'm not going to take you through all of these, but through this presentation, you will see how different the keyboard is, what's missing, and what's included. Um, I even have a uh, top row explained uh, slide here that tells you what all of these buttons across the top do. So please take a look at this. It'll help you use your Chromebook more effectively. Uh, another thing that I have are some keyboard shortcuts, some things that you can do in combination on your keyboard to help you use the Chromebook more efficiently. You can see I have a lot of them here, um, even with some blown up keys to help you take a look at what uh, the Chromebook can do a little quicker or what the Chromebook does similar to a PC, maybe with a few different keystrokes. You can see I have a few more there for screenshots. Kids are taking screenshots of their screen. Uh, for teachers. And then the other big part of a Chromebook which is different is this thing along the bottom. Now on a Windows it's called a taskbar. Um, a Mac usually doesn't have this. It usually has a bunch of apps that come up on the bottom. But this is called the shelf on a Chromebook and it's at the bottom of the screen. And you'll have your apps launcher here to find things and search the internet. And then any apps that you can pin to the shelf that the district has pre-pinned. And then you can pin your own as well if you'd like. And then all of your device settings, your Wi-Fi, network, all those things are located down in the right-hand corner of the shelf. Um, there are a lot of touchpad uh, shortcuts. You'll see this touchpad that's here um, is a little different. And here are some tricks to use it, uh, a single click or a tap. A lot of people feel like they have to push in on that uh, trackpad or that touchpad to get it to work. Our little Chromebooks we have, it's just a simple tap. And for a right click, it's a single two finger tap. And then I have a little video here that shows you how to scroll on your Chromebook using two fingers. Um, there's also a camera app and I have some directions here on how to uh, use it. A lot of students use this camera app for different things that their teachers are asking them to do. Um, also uh, I should mention that there are a certain number of extensions that are allowed for kids um, and if you look up at the top of your Chromebook there's an internet browser screen and you might see these types of things along the side. Um, there are different ones that um, students are allowed to use. For instance, this one right here, Screencastify. 
that I kind of covered up here with this bar. Um, it looks like a little video camera and an arrow. Um, those are ones that the uh, students, believe, I believe, have access to. And remember that a lot of these extensions, because they're third party, they're not made by Google, are limited by our IT department to keep your uh, child's device and your child safe. Um, again, you can go back through this presentation. There's a lot in, in, contained in it. Use it as a resource. It'll stay up on the tips of the week page. Um, and don't forget, if you have a suggestion for a video, maybe there's something you're struggling with at home or want to learn more about a particular Google app or something that your child or you are struggling with, um, on the tips of the week page, you'll see a suggestion box if you scroll down. Give it a click, fill out that quick form, and that'll come to me, and hopefully I can uh, fill your request with a video that would help you. So this is another video of tips of the week uh, from your tech integrator, Matt Mariglia. I hope everyone out there is staying safe and well, and we'll see you next week.